I don't even know why I'm making this. Like, I usually have an intention. I've usually got a whiteboard with, like, some stuff written on it. I've often got a timer, a clock or something. Um, but I had this convo with Lola. I was talking about um, this experience I had. I saw uh, this video, and this dude was talking about survival, and he said, most of us would rather not eat than be eaten. And I just was like, no, nah, can't relate to that. Like, just didn't, didn't connect. And I'm like, what's, what's that about? Because, like, it makes perfect sense. And I'm always on about evolutionary biology and survival instincts. And, um, you know, that's kind of how psychology links science and religion, spirituality, is this kind of um, the marriage of science and, and our spiritual experience. It's kind of explained by psychology. Like, there's all this data, but then it sort of moves into, like, yeah, but the experience of being human is not always logical as well. So we do all this right brain stuff, and now this somatic stuff's becoming more popular, like bottom-up treatment for, you know, anxiety. You can't think your way out of anxiety. You can't think your way out of depression, right? So, um, yeah, so anyway, I heard this thing, and I was just like, no, nah, I would not prefer not to eat than to be eaten. I absolutely constantly take ridiculous risks. Fucking throw my body under the bus. Um, get called a fucking idiot. Like, the amount of times I've gone for the fucking gold and people have been like, you're a fucking idiot, what are you doing? You know, writing books, I don't even read that much. Like, I probably read more than most people, but, like, I don't read as much as, like, book nerds that I know, like, I probably should read more if I'm going to write books, you know, I should be an absolute book nerd, um, you know, I opened a MMA gym when I was a white belt, like, nobody, nobody was like, oh, how long have you trained for, it's like, I'd worked at Mar Melbourne Martial Arts for years, I did a martial arts instructor certificate, but everyone's like, you fucking dickhead, where the fuck is a white belt, and it's like, man, I only just put on a gi, like, three months ago, like, I don't give a shit about gi, I wanted to be an MMA fighter, you know, but, like, no part of me is like, oh, I better not do that because everyone will think I'm a dickhead. I'm like, call me a fucking dickhead. Like, I'm going to get the gold. I'm going to get the girl, you know. I'm going to get the job. I'm going to get the corner office. I'm going to fucking take what I want, right? And so this thing just triggered this thing in me. I was like, why is that? Why am I not afraid of, like, getting eaten? And I'm just looking to eat, right? And I realized, and I don't know why I'm saying this. It's, like, kind of a vulnerability thing or whatever. It's from being an addict, you know? Like, when you wake up every morning and you just fucking hate your life and you hate yourself and you hate the voices that are there and you hate how you feel, you will do anything to get the fuck away from yourself. And it doesn't matter how long it takes. Once you manage to get out of bed, once you manage to punch through the depression and actually get your fucking shoes on, the scheming just begins, right? And I know there's people watching this right now going like, he's saying it. In fact, he's saying it out loud. It's like, no matter how many obstacles come your way that day, you will find the money, you will find a dealer, you know, you'll you'll make it happen. There's no quits. There's no like, man, maybe I'll just go home and stuff. And like, as I, you know, got sober and later in life, I was like a sex and love addict, you know, swipey swipe. And it's like, you can always fall back on internet porn. You know, you can always like go back to that and like eating carbs to feel love. You know what I mean? Like you can always fall back on that. But when you're an actual drug addict or an alcoholic, like, you have to find it, you know? And I reckon that's why I've got this stupid, foolhardy bravery to me. And it's like, no, nah, I'm going for it. Nothing's going to stand in my way. It's like, I conditioned myself over 10 years to go relentlessly towards the goal. And pretty much every time, like, when you get it and it's in your hands and you're doing the ritual of taking it, whichever drug it is. And I really liked MDMA. I was very addicted to weed didn't like meth because I got like anger problems and shit and now they're under control but when I was 19 they were you know I was very violent when you know it was much easier to get in a fight than it was to get laid back then you know uh yeah when the actual drugs in your hands and you're doing your ritual and that it's a completely different thing to the dopamine and chasing it and trying to get it and overcoming the obstacles to get it when you're actually there with this drug you're just like fuck you man you know it's like oh you and me again again we're gonna go down this rabbit hole and I going to tell myself it's the last time, and, like, I'm going to quit tomorrow, and all your friends laugh at you, you know, there's that ad, not even once, like, for ice, 
And he's like, oh, just once. Oh, I'm just going to try it once. And they all laugh at him. Like, all the other druggies laugh. You know, it's like that. It's like that every fucking day, you know. But yeah, so... I don't know why I made this video. I just... I felt like I wanted to share it. Like, when I was talking to Lola about it, she was like... You know, she was touched by it. So, there's no point. There's no fucking preachy message. Usually, I plan like that because I'm a writer and, you know, I know what people are going through. The collective zeitgeist of what we're experiencing psychologically and I'm, I'm trying to help, you know, you all know that. This is just, I don't know, I'm just sharing. Yeah, maybe that's why. Peace.